Hello, everybody! Thank you so much for stopping by and welcome to our very first Q&A video. If you watched my other video, which I posted today on the same day that this video is going up, it is called something like Q&A intro slash explanation. If you watch that video, uh, you will be understanding how often these videos will be posted, how they're gonna work, and how to submit questions, the like, and stuff like that. In this video, there will be four people, including myself. Uh, it will be on the screen to save time so that, you know, I don't, you don't have to hear me rambling. But yeah, without further ado, let's get started with today's Q&A video. How long have you been voice acting? Why did you decide to do it? Um, I have to say it's been about four years now. Very inconsistently, but inconsistently, not consistently, inconsistently. Inconsistently? Inconsistently. Jeez, what a weird word. Um, so about four years, uh, I was very consistent maybe the first two years because I was working for Saragon Dubs production as well as doing my own production. However, um, college started up again and I hadn't really gotten back into voice acting until I started working on my own personal series, which started about a year ago. So I would say like Consistently, maybe about two or three-ish years, but in total, um, I started four years ago. I decided to do it because I met a voice actor um, that I really looked up to at the time, and I had talked to him a bit on that day, and he really did encourage me to do it. He liked my voice, and it really gave me the boost that I needed. Unfortunately, that person is not exactly the highest in the public eye at the moment, but eh, it's a good memory to look back on. I started voice acting in like 2014, but, um, oh god, it's been a long time. Um, but it's never been consistently. I would be taking breaks, you know, I would do voice acting for like a year or two years, and then, you know, just stuff comes up, you know, um, and then take, I would take breaks and stuff, so, um, yeah, it's really inconsistent, but the point is, um, even though I'm still like, I haven't really improved, I started in 2014. Um, around the time that I discovered voice acting, I first discovered anime. And anime inspired my dream of becoming a voice actress because I was very fascinated as a kid by this. I thought it was amazing, you know, I would cry from like certain scenes because of the delivery, I thought it was phenomenal. and. You know, I just, one day I decided to finally grow the courage, set my foot down, and try auditioning. I've been voice acting for about six years, I think. I got started as soon as I finished high school and was available, was able to afford a microphone. So I decided to do voice acting because when I was young, I always loved acting. When I would turn on television and I would see my favorite characters and my favorite shows, I just loved, loved seeing it and I wanted to do it myself. When I was in high school, I did, high, I did speech and debate and I did um, humorous interpretation in speech and debate and I always loved acting out the characters, it was truly a passion of mine. So I decided to save up some money, get myself uh, a microphone. Um, I first I started out small, I, <laughs> I recorded on my phone and I submitted an audition to uh, Behind the Voice Actors. It was just a just a joke aud uh, audition, just uh, just to try it out to see how it would, how it would uh, just to see how it would uh, how it would turn out. And uh, about two days later, I got an email back saying that I got the part where I was a um, an abusive boyfriend in a Sims in a Sims animated movie, um, and. Uh, after the, when I when I first did the lines, I really enjoyed being able to bring the character to life, and that's and, and that inspired me to level up my equipment, get better, better uh, microphones, better gear, better, um, and better uh, space for my recordings, uh, better software, so that I could uh, level up my game and do much better for my future for any future roles that I could be a part of. How would you describe your voice? How would I describe my voice? Um, annoying. <laughs> no, uh... 
Hmm. I think I'm going to go with how people describe my voice because I didn't really think this way about my voice until somebody brought up to me, and they were saying that it could be used in trailers or that it was smooth or comforting or soothing, so on and so forth. But yeah. To be honest, I would describe my voice as like I guess basic. Um, I personally don't think my voice is anything like. I personally don't really like my voice. I don't think it's like unique or anything. I think it's pretty like basic, you know,、um, and it's probably recognizable like in a bad way. <laughs> like I don't think、um, it's like some of those big name voices. Like I don't think it's up there, but you know, it's whatever. <laughs> I would describe my voice as mostly like alto.、Um, I think I think that's the right word for it. Kind of like high pitched, but not super high.、Um, I can't really hit like the the super high notes you hear from、uh, vocalists like the lead singer of、uh, Coheed and Cambria,、um, but I can't quite hit a lot of low notes either. I can go pretty low. I can get my voice pretty low, but. Uh, it's not very loud when I try.、Um, I find that I can project pretty well. I can be very loud when I want to be, but it's、uh, honestly kind of difficult to be loud using certain voices.、Uh, I'll get into that with some other answers to some different questions. I think the best word to describe my voice would probably be deep, like really stone cold deep. I think that's what. That's why I tend to favor、uh, anti-heroic、uh, villain characters, who are usually cold-hearted,、uh, emotionless, or、uh, downtrodden,、um, tormented characters, because my voice really fits those types of characters,、um, and that's why、um, I fit well. My voice fits well with those characters because I can truly bring them to life. With、um, with how deep my voice can be. Do you have an embarrassing moment that happened to you when you did lines, or do you have a funny story to share about when you did lines? No, not really. I've never really been embarrassed when doing lines. Like most of the time,、um, when there's a line that comes up that's like embarrassing or I guess sexual in nature,、um, I imagine that it's the character. Saying it, not me. So that kind of reduces all embarrassment completely. Oh God, I have a bunch of these moments. Um, <laughs> gee,、uh, I don't know where to start. Um, let's see. Um, there is one that I do remember very distinctly. Um, <laughs> and it's um, I feel kind of bad for my director at the time. And the voice actress for this one character couldn't do her line of like screaming because you know where she is currently located or where she was located because this was like five years ago,、um, <laughs> and so she, the character had her arm chopped off. So he asked me to do it, and you know I I did it. I I was screaming, and I didn't really have a mic at the time, so I was using like. Well, actually, I did have a mic. I just didn't know how to turn off the gain, like to lower the gain, which is like the the volume. And <laughs> you know, I was、uh, back in my old house, and I had a very small room. So、um, you know, I had my desk, and then my bed would be like two feet away from it. So I would turn on the recording, and then I would like get on my bed as far away from the desk that I could, because the room was really small. It was like. It's not even the size of a regular room. It was just like really, really, really small. And you know, I screamed my lungs off. I guess my my dad heard because he came inside because he was outside. And my room is kind of like close to the backyard. And the funny thing is, I didn't have like my windows open. My door was closed. Everything was like closed. And he came running inside. He's like, "Are you okay? What happened? Why are you screaming?" <laughs> and then little me was just like. Oh, you know, I'm just voice acting. You know, like I I was screaming because the character,、um, the arm got chopped off, and then my dad was just like, "Oh, okay, this kid is crazy."、Um, <laughs> no, he he didn't. He probably didn't actually think that. 
um, he knows about my little voice acting thing, but when he hears me doing lines, he kind of like mimics me or mocks me. <laughs> um, you know, making fun of me. Typical, typical parent, parent thing, right? Um, and, you know, I, I sent it to the director and a few hours later, he had messaged me. And he was like, you know, Sparkly, I'm going to kill you or something like that. I don't really remember what he said too, too well. And I was like, why? What happened? What's going on? And then he's like, you scared the shit out of me. Like, you scared the crap out of me. And I was like, wait, what do you mean? And then he said, this was really good. He had his PC, like, on full volume. So, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> um, I think he had his earphones in. I'm not even sure. Or if he didn't, then I just completely destroyed his f-ing key, uh, computers, speakers. Um, and I was just screaming loud. And then, like, he got scared. I think he fell off his chair and he hit the mute button on his PC. <laughs> and- and yeah and that's just pretty much it and I, I still kind of feel bad but hey you told me to scream i can scream this isn't so much an embarrassing story as it is a funny prideful one <laughs> but uh there's this one project that i'm in that just got started back up recently and i'm pretty happy about um that is a code lyoko fan dub of sorts and it, in one scene, I'm like falling for it's like several seconds. I want to say 15 to 20. That might be an exaggeration, though. Uh, and I am holding this scream note that whole time. And there's like I get snatched up in the last second, but there's a good 20 seconds, I want to say, of me just screaming into a microphone, holding a note for that whole time. And uh, my director was genuinely proud of me doing that. And I just thought it was really funny that he was that proud. Because, like, uh, it's not that hard if you know what you're doing, but it still made me feel kind of good inside. So this has happened to me uh, a few times. And one, uh, actually, it escalated. Um, I uh, Originally, I was doing voices in my room um, at my old house. And I didn't have a uh, like a, a big closet then, so I had to do it in my own my own bedroom. Um, and on a ca- on occasion, I get lines where I have to like yell really loudly. Well, unfortunately, um, I yelled a uh, I, I yelled uh, a line where I had to say like uh, "You will obey me," and. Um, I sounded like really, really aggressive, and it got, and I yelled so loud to the point that the na- my na- my next door neighbors actually heard me, and they called the police on me, and that was a very awkward conversation. And um, on occasion, I get uh, calls from the uh, from the neighbors, or they come over and visit me, asking me, you know, why am I being so loud, you know, and I had to explain to them that I'm doing uh, voiceover work, and. Um, you know, and that next time they should just, you know, call me and ask me to keep it, tone it down a bit instead of just calling the police like they did last time. So that was both embarrassing and really hilarious. Who is your favorite character from the project or projects you're in? My favorite character from the project that I'm in, um, I, I don't know too much about him. Uh, his name is like Vincent Knight or something like that. I don't know. He seems pretty cool. But he's also trying to get together with this, like, girl that's seven years younger than him. So, um, yeah, please watch out. So, my favorite character from the projects I'm in, in regards to just Saragon dub projects, uh, it's kind of narrow because I only voice the two. But I like both Elias and Alfred for different reasons. I like Elias because I feel like I can play him pretty easily. And uh, I think that he can be interesting in some scenes. uh, And I do enjoy playing the kind of pompous Pratt character. Um, I think I like Alfred better from a narrative perspective. uh, Just because he's more sinister. And I really like playing sinister characters. But the problem is that his voice is really hard for me to do. Like, it actually really hurts for me to do his voice properly. Um, so I'm very limited in my ability to voice Alfred, and that, like, that gives me reasons not to like voicing Alfred. 
Uh, but I like him as a character more than Elias, who is easier for me to voice. So it kind of, I don't know if that's, I guess the answer is that it's complicated. Is that an answer? I might be a little biased in saying this, but my favorite character in the project that I'm currently working on has to be the character that I'm voicing, Glenn Shing. He is, without a doubt, the best character I have ever had the pleasure of voicing. Everything about him is what I love in any type of video game, anime, cartoon character, where they appear to be cold, emotionless, you know, uh, withdrawn from everyone else to the point where everyone's either, you know, terrified of them or they just tend to stay away from him. Um, and it's getting to voice that character and really um, showcase you know, the other side of that character uh, and the other side of Glenn where he appears to be, you know, emotionless and cold and, you know, really withdrawn from all the, everyone else when in actuality, he's actually a really good guy. He's just, um, he's just very withdrawn because of his past and because of, you know, he has a hard time expressing his emotions um, in a way most people do. And it's through his interactions with the main character that he's able to express those feelings that he's able that he's been uh he has buried down and uh i think that's what i really love about about him and voicing characters like him so my favorite character in the project has to be the character that i'm voicing glenn shing what's your favorite type of character to voice my favorite type of character to voice particularly are villains um I don't really like playing the hero archetype too much or the good guy or the side character, but the villain is enough in the spotlight wherein he has an interesting, well, I would hope most of the time that he's not just evil for the sake of being evil, that he has a legitimately interesting reason for being quote unquote evil to the heroes. He may not be evil to the world, but he's certainly evil to the heroes, and when he has his lines trying to explain his motives, I find those enthralling, interesting, or even the actions that he takes to therein hurt the hero characters. Um, I feel like I have the voice for it, and I like being sinister and dark and mysterious or whatever. But yeah, that's about it. I guess my favorite type of character would have to be, like, the more emotional characters, you know, the ones that, that scream a lot, like, I'm mad a lot. Um, I, I find that it's really easy for me to, you know, uh, act out getting mad or like, I just like animated characters pretty much. Like, I, I can't really do the, <laughs> I'm not a town, you know, you know, like, okay. Not like that, but like, I can't really, it's just hard for me to like be subtle. Um, I'm like so over the top with everything I do. So, um, yeah, I guess like characters that are super like hyper or like um animated or like get angry a lot you know just the overly emotional characters um except the ones that cry or cry a lot i i can't fake cry i can't cry on command and yeah <laughs> that's just oh or the characters that laugh too much i can't really laugh good on command um <laughs> so uh yeah this is going to be kind of a bland answer but i think that my favorite kind of characters to play are literally anybody that's super passionate about something in either a positive or negative way. Uh, so, like, take some kind of uh, superhero type character that is so driven about their goals and willing to fight for what they believe in, or take characters like Alfred that are so sinisterly obsessed with this one thing. They need this, they want this, they will get it, and they don't care how you feel about it. Those, I think, are my favorite kinds of characters to play on both spectrums. Probably my favorite question of all time. So, the type of character that I prefer to voice would have to be either villainous characters, um, like really cold, heartless, villainous characters, or my personal preference, which is anti-heroic characters. The type of characters that do bad things for good reasons. And the reason for that is because um, everyone is so quick to judge those types of characters um, because, you know, they're 
most of the time they appear to be immoral because of their actions, when in actuality they do those immoral actions for the greater good. All right, and I love um, bringing out uh, bringing out um, their their inner goodness um, behind that, that that they keep hidden behind their cold shell that they try to they try to keep hidden from the people close to them because they don't want uh, the people close to them to get hurt. So I really enjoy voicing those kinds of characters and I really enjoy bringing them to life. <laughs>